Um, when I was on Spike, I was a supervisor, so most of my um, hours would be in from 8 o'clock in the morning till 5 in the evening. Uh, you'd have to get a boat from Cove at 10 to 8 in the morning, and that got you over to Spike. From 88 onwards, I was straight days, 8 to 5, I didn't do any uh, shift work, other than work every second weekend. We used work a, a roster 10 days on, 4 days off. Um, well, the prison was unlocked when we got over there at 8 o'clock in the morning at around 10 past 8. The prisons were served their, their breakfast and then they were locked up again. Staff then went for their breakfast. The prison was locked again at about nine, 10 past 9 and the prison went out then to work or education or whatever they were, they were assigned to for the day until roughly around 12.30 and they came back then and dinner was served. They were locking themselves then until 2 p.m. And again, they were unlocked for work and, or work and schooling from 2 o'clock until approximately 4.30, where they were locked up again after having their tea. In the evening time then, they were locked at half past 5 until half past 7, and that was just evening recreation. Whereas down the television, uh, playing uh, sports out in the yard, or handball, football, things like that. Spike was a unique prison in that it was an island prison. So it was the only one in, in the country. The only access to it was by boat. So everything, staff, provisions, prisoners, even for anything on the building line, if we needed a truckload of sand, that had to come on by, by barge as well. So everything had to be organised. You couldn't just head off and say, listen, I'm going to hit the town for five minutes. It just couldn't happen. You had to wait until the boat was there to take you out, and you had to wait until it took you back. It, it made it unique also in that it was more, probably a little bit more relaxed in that it was a big wide open space inside the fort and you could afford to leave the prisoners have some more freedom than might happen in, a, in an ordinary prison in the state. The Spike was a great place to work, it always was. Um, the staff always got on well together and they got on well with the other services as well, with the teachers and the, the welfare service and all the other um, people that were tied up in Spike um, over the years. It was just, it was a kind of a one unit. Everybody was there to do the one thing. And because it was a smaller number of prisoners in 102, you knew them all and you, had a, you kind of had a relationship with them. It was generally accepted by the prisoners that the food on Spike was, was good. Um, again, you had the, the, the main prison kitchen was staffed by two officers, but you had six or eight prisoners working in there as well. You also had them working in, in other areas like cleaning um, in the, on the grounds, you had them doing a bit of horticulture and there was also a very good school in Spike where you could have 25 to 30 prisoners per, per day in, involved in the school. There was a fairly good gym as well and on an ordinary day all, almost all the prisons would be working. There were very few prisoners that would be sitting in the recreation hall twiddling their thumbs. You know, most of them had, had activities and were able to do something. The riot on Spike that night was totally unexpected. Um, there had been difficulties over in the previous couple of weeks, but nothing that would have led us to believe that there was going to be a, a major uh, riot. I certainly don't believe it was planned. I think it was just a spur of the moment I, that took off that night and it escalated way, out of, way out, out of control, you know. The resources that the staff had that night were rather poor. Like, it was still being an established prison. Um, there was no Right equipment, there was no radio equipment. There was shortly after the, the fire started, it burned through one of the telephone wires, so there was no contact with the, the mainland. Um, and it, it just, like, there was only 10 or 12 staff on duty on the night, including staff that, that was including the staff that were in the mess, that were off duty, that came in to support the staff. Until about later on the night, where the, the reinforcements came in. But it was a lucky, a lucky night for the staff and the prisons that nobody was seriously injured. Uh, the riot happened on a Saturday night and on the Sunday night all the prisons were still held on Spike Island. Um, there was 112 there that night in different accommodation. Um, the doors weren't secure, they were just an ordinary, kind of if you imagine a shed door was all that was there with a couple of padlocks on it. Um, but as I said, they were all held there that night and the following day and the Monday they were moved out between Mount Joy, Cork and, and Limerick. It was very sad leaving Spike. Um, the reason I left it was promoted to, to Cork Prison. 
Um, so it was by choice. I could have stayed, but again, you want to improve yourself and move on. So I just I moved up to Cork for another 15 years.